if at this point you have watched my previous recordings regarding metabolism and the processes before that, including absorption and distribution, this is an extra topic that I could add, which is something more clinical. It's already applied, but this is very important. And in fact, it would end up feeling basic for people who actually uh, are taking uh, pharmaceutical courses or healthcare courses or programs. And this is about the topic that we call enzyme inhibitors or inducers. Now, we need to put the correct context before everything else when we discuss this topic. Because if we are to discuss the word enzyme in biochemistry, it would actually be a very general term, right? Because many different enzymes perform many different reactions. In fact, uh, you would remember we even have uh, six uh, enzyme commission numbers. But, you know, for the purpose of pharmacology and specifically pharmacokinetics, we must note that when we mention enzyme, it's more of the enzymes which are responsible for metabolism of drugs. Now, if we go back to our pharmacokinetic plot right here, and I have three duplicates, so we could probably just look at the first one here. Uh, remember, we always uh, mentioned this before, that the ascending part wherein the concentration increases over time is the part wherein absorption is dominant. And again, in this case, this means that this rising part right here is equivalent to the process of our drug molecules going from the site of administration into the blood. Okay, so if this is uh, going up, then this means absorption is happening a lot at the moment. However, we also know that it would peak somewhere and then it will start falling down because that is the time that our uh, drug molecules get distributed elsewhere and some of them eventually reach the liver. And we know that the liver has most of the enzymes that perform metabolism. Thus, we always have to remember that when we mention enzymes this time, we are actually foreseeing the decline or the dropping of the pharmacokinetic plot. Obviously, the concentration goes down because again, we are converting the, let's assume the yellow means active uh, molecules into the purple ones, which we can think of as the inactive metabolites. And so if we uh, go further in our discussion of pharmacokinetics, we have to maintain the so-called steady state, meaning after administered the first dose of a certain medication, you have to wait for some time. And if the timing is correct, you could give the second dose in such manner that you actually keep staying inside the therapeutic window not high enough to reach toxicity, but not below or not low enough to remove the effect altogether. Now, if you are taking a single drug for you know, a patient or probably for yourself, then we could predict that, hey, I'm going to have to take my second dose after six hours because there's nothing interfering. However, there are many other things around us that actually can either inhibit or induce enzymes. They could be another drug. That's why we have what we call drug interactions, and it is actually a very big thing for clinical pharmacy practice. And um, other than that, we also have things like food, some food or some environmental molecules. Uh, usually, some of them are pollutants that can also either inhibit or induce enzymes. Of course, uh, hopefully, these words are not so deep that we don't understand. When you inhibit something, you block it. And when you do something, you kind of force it to go further or you know, uh, be more powerful. So what would happen if we have an enzyme inhibitor that is particular for this drug that we are talking about? Well, we just mentioned a while ago that when we have an enzyme that is active, we imagine our plot going down. So the role of the enzyme is to make this go down, reduce the concentration. But if we stop that, well, what can you imagine would happen to this uh, plot right here? Well, we can kind of assume that, you know, since you are stopping the decline, you are kind of extending the time that the drug goes up because when you inhibit this, 
Okay, it's like you're 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 delaying the dropping of this graph. And so if you can imagine that this will this will uh, happen in a cumulative fashion, then what can you comment on? You would notice that it is much easier to you know um, go beyond the minimum toxic concentration. That is why we assume that when we have a certain enzyme inhibitor drug or food or environmental uh, factor or sometimes even a disease, then that predisposes the patient or the one taking this drug to increased uh, effect. Well, it, it, that would be fine if, if we want increased effect. But of course, again, the dose makes the poison. There is also a tendency to reach toxicity. So they, there is a higher risk also for the patient. That is what we don't want to happen and what we want to prevent when we give inhibitors. Now, if you are asked, how can we remedy something like this? That I know that a patient is exposed to an inhibitor. And let's say you cannot do anything about it because this is another drug that the patient has to take as well. Well, if we know that the concentration becomes too high for this drug right here, then it could be safe to assume that a usual remedy is to reduce the dose of that drug. So if you, you know, reduce it probably up to this level, then even if the enzyme metabolizing this becomes inhibited, you're still somehow getting inside the window. You're still not exceeding it. Okay, And of course, these things make um, things difficult. So these are things that really have to be analyzed by uh, the clinical pharmacist or other people who are in charge of the patient. Now, what if we have an enzyme inducer instead? Well, you are promoting the enzyme to go further. So that would be kind of opposite of what happened here. So in, a while ago, the dropping of the plot becomes slower because of an inhibitor. So you would probably assume that here, the dropping of the plot becomes even higher. And so if you keep giving the same dose as you would without the inducer, then there's this chance that eventually we don't even know it. You didn't compute or assume it or you didn't take it into consideration. You have the risk of going below the MEC. And we know that means that the effect would prematurely stop. So that means that, you know, uh, this is what others can call, there is the risk of failure of therapy. Meaning you want a certain effect, you thought the dose was right, but because the drug is getting eliminated much faster, then it, it's actually not reaching the minimum required. So you would be surprised, hey, I'm giving this patient an antihypertensive. Why is the blood pressure still very high? Or I'm giving a drug to reduce blood sugar. Why is the blood sugar still not going down? And it may be because of an inducer. You, you, you have the correct dose if the drug was given alone, but this one made things complicated. And so the remedy would probably be the opposite of the one above. So this time, it would be wise to increase the dose of whatever drug you have at the moment. And those are the importances of enzyme inhibitors and inducers because adjusting the dose for the patient to not suffer any adverse effect or you know, suffer from failure of therapy are big things, don't you think? And in fact, um, if this still does not work, let's say the drug is still not working or the toxicity is still there, then we might have to think of other things like replacing the drug, though that is already you know, not part of pharmacokinetics.